Today we're going to address a question which frequently appears in our question box, and that is, Tim, is there a modern building you actually like? And uh, the answer is yes. <laughs> and we're going to look, in fact, at two buildings today which uh, are good because they function well for the city of Buffalo, they can house people very well, and they contribute to the street life of downtown. And uh, the first building we're going to look at uh, on your left is this building, the Western New York Savings Bank by Dwayne Lyman and Associates. And then on the right, the blue tinted Tishman building by Emery Roth and Sons from 1958. We're on Court Street, looking across Court Street at the Western New York Savings Bank to point out how this building, despite the fact that it's in the modern or international style, is still respectful of its environment and the topography of the street that it's on. Court Street runs on a slope. It peaks at Main Street, and you can see here the building uh, actually follows the slope and the storefronts along the street actually are flush with the sidewalk, okay? And you look at this and you say, well, you know, big deal. What's revolutionary about that? Um, well, actually, there's nothing revolutionary about that. It's the way storefronts, buildings were always designed. You go to uh, ancient Peru, ancient Rome, Egypt, uh, Amsterdam, wherever there's a slope, the building is going to follow the slope so people can simply walk in. So this building, 1963, the last modern building which followed that kind of uh, good social impulse to design storefronts right on the sidewalk to not be set back into a plaza. And this one to this day has occupied retail uh, storefronts, which is uh, fabulous and it still contributes to the pedestrian life of downtown. Well, for contrast sake, here's a great example of what you don't do. This is the Buffalo Convention Center of the mid-1970s. Absolutely brutalistic materials, no windows, service entrance for one solid block, about 600 feet, absolutely destroying any potential for urban life, not only on the block that it occupies, but the other side of Pearl Street uh, beyond it is no one wants to look out at this. It's a really forbidding environment. So this is uh, a good example of what not to do. Looking at the Tishman Building of 1958 by Emery Roth and Sons of New York, right next door to another new beloved landmark, the Rand Building, designed in the Art Deco style, about uh, 25 years earlier. It's a fairly straightforward building, a good fabric building, not high style architecture. It did not win any awards, and yet it does things very well. It's divided just the way Lewis Sullivan says a building ought to be divided. It ought to have a clear base, shaft, and capital, and it does this in a modern idiom the way the Rand Building does uh, in a Art Deco idiom. But at the base, you can see that the frame of the building is expressed at the base. You can see the dark metal. Uh, that's the steel frame. And between it are bays, structural bays. Each one of those, as designed, was a storefront. So you had retail facing Lafayette Square. There's also an elevation which faces Main Street. I remember buying Fanny Farmer candies there. And then we have the shaft of the building. And you can see here, if you, if you go to the base of the building, you see where the steel frame meets the sidewalk. And then those shafts or pilasters will go straight up to the top of the building. And in between the structural steel of the bays are these glass panels. So you get these one, two, three, four, five units which go straight up to the top of the building, emphasizing some verticality. Now, the last thing that they're doing well, base shaft and capital, a, a lot of modern buildings don't have a terminal floor that's really obvious. The building kind of just goes on into infinity, into the sky. Uh, but here, the Tishman building has the uh, equipment floor all the way at the top, and you can see uh, black metal louvers, and that is a really good cap uh, on top of the building. 
and it fits in very well. It also uh, actually is fairly respectful of the Rand building next door because if you look very carefully, the very top colored glass panel nearly matches the first setback of the Ram building. So very good building, subtle architectural features, and then ground floor retail at the base. That is so important to urban vitality. We're here uh, just to contrast the Tishman building and West New York Savings Bank with a building just a couple years later, the Erie County Savings Bank building of the late 1960s. What happens here when you have a building that wants to be on its own level platform while the slope of the street changes, you have absolutely blank wall. No potential for retail space and uh, consequently no activity. It creates a dead zone around the building. So uh, unfortunately this is a, another key corner in downtown Buffalo, uh, but in contrast to Main and Court, Main and Church here is rather dead. <laughs> Can't get in. Impenetrable. There's nothing behind here. There's just drywall behind here. This is one of the great views of Buffalo. What a sweep from the old post office, Ellicott Square, St. John's, the Guarantee, and it's this giant blank wall.